there's a lot of tyres I know who are not familiar with feather folding. Now the first time I saw it was about 10 years ago and Marc Petitjean was demonstrating folding and spinning CDC feathers. And he was doing it using his magic tool, which is this bit of kit. All right, now when I do these bits of stuff for you, uh, I always like to try and give you an alternative. Uh, and uh, this alternative, you need to be very good at DIY. Well, quite good anyway. Take a piece of wood, about six inches long and about two inches square, okay? There it is. And uh, cut the front end to a blunt point, like that. Blunt point, front end, there you go. And chamfer the rear end to make it look pretty. Then drill lots of holes in it to accommodate all your bobbins and your whip finish tools and your scissors. Then cut a step in the end there, a little step. And into the step, put a bit of closed cell foam. That's this stuff. You can, uh, you can get it at any vineyard outlet. Really good stuff, very easy to cut with a sharp knife. All right, once you've stuck it in there, put five little slices in it, various widths along the closed cell foam and cut grooves in it, or cut slots, I should say. Cut slots, got one, two, three, four, five slots. And uh, they will be for folding the feather. Just cut them halfway down, okay? A friend of mine made this for me. I'm not very good at DIY. And he said, oh, I'll sort that out for you. And I take this everywhere with me, it's great. I put all my tools in there and fold my feathers in there. Right, I'll show you how it works. The first thing you need is a nice CDC feather and you need to pull all the fibres down so that they're sticking out horizontally. Alrighty? Then put it down on a nice clear surface and take some of your favourite dubbing. Now, as you probably know, I've said it before, Hair E Ice Dub is mine. Just take the merest whisper of dubbing. You really don't need a lot, otherwise it'll be difficult to spin it. And lay it like this on top of the feather. Now, try not to get it down the center of the feather, otherwise it makes it quite difficult to spin. Um, and so you want it evenly spread over the feather like that. Right, then you take a nice piece of wire and you lay that down the center of the feather like this. You pick up the whole thing very carefully. There we are. Like that. And you slip it down in, what should we go today? S slot three, I think. We'll push it into there like that. Put it right down. Ooh. There we go. Pull out the wire, lay that to one side. Snip off the ends. One, two. Pick it up with your clear clip. It doesn't have to be this clip, it can be a bulldog clip. Pick it up like this. And with your scissors, cut off the stem. There we are. So there you have it. This is what we're going to put into the split thread, all right? Okay, now to split the thread, take a sewing machine needle and split the thread like this. There we are. Put the dubbing into the thread, grip it with the thread, release it, and then spin the bobbin. And give it a good spin because you really want to tighten up this CDC and dubbing. And it gives a nice little sparkly rope. Look at that. That's great, isn't it? Now you're going to wind this forward down the body. But let me tell you a little bit about the body first of all. As you can see, I've already started the fly. I put a three millimeter bead on a Camasan B175, size 10. And um, I put a little marabou tail and a little bit of flash. For the marabou, by the way, I use this stuff from Funky Fly Tying. They're really excellent company. Um, and I've also put a little bit of flash on the tail here, as you can see, and I've used Vanyard's Micro Flash in grey. There we go. Right, now we're going to uh, wind this forward on the, to make the body of the fly. As we do that, we're going to hold back the fibres, like this, like this. Keep holding them back, hold them back. Hold those fibres, yes, there we go. Good. There we go, a nice fluffy body. Let your, let your bobbin unspin. Now you may think that looks a bit clunky, 
Um, and I suppose it is. It's called the buzzy bug. Um, but when it gets in the water, you can see all those fibres will be pulsating. And uh, on still waters in southern England in the winter, it's caught me an awful lot of fish. So there we go. We'll just give it a little whip finish. And there you have it, the buzzy bug. Lovely. I'll give that a little touch of varnish in just a moment. Now, if you'd like to see a lot more flies, a lot more fun, and a lot more of my stuff, go to my website. It's at www.chrissanford.com.